Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. Often a very complex and difficult mod pack to play through, but today we have one very simple objective. See this drawer right here? We have to fill it. Automatically, of course. <laughs> and with spruce logs specifically. Yeah, so this is going to be the final piece of the puzzle in order to fully automate benzene. We're still actually yet to buffer any. I think it's still trying to fill the buffers on the gas turbines to power the whole system. Benzene, as we know, is going to be our plan to power the rest of our base as we move into the HV tier and beyond. So when we boil it down, it's basically just a tree farm we need, right? Easy. Oh, <laughs> well, kind of. This is New Horizons after all. We have a couple of options, actually. The option we're going to take, though, is the farming station from Ender.io. And there's a couple of things we're going to need to get this. The first is actually a quest in the MV chapter, which is not exactly essential. I just really want the quest reward. Which I'll admit is a bit out of character, but I think it's going to help us out tremendously here. A bit like this miner, which was on a calcite vein. And calcite we've been using to make more of this concrete to give us the speed bonus around the base. So yeah, the farming station is in the HV tab, but the MV tab actually has a quest here for tantalite ore. It's after the nether tantalite ore specifically. If you guys remember, we did actually previously mine out a whole manganese vein. I think at the time we didn't have the quest unlocked, so we need to find a separate vein here. And besides, it doesn't really hurt to have some extra resources. We'll, we'll need some more of this tantalite ore today. After some searching around the nether with the prospector scanner, we did come across another tantalite ore and we got the miner placed and running smoothly. We set a little waypoint on the map, chunk loaded the area and marked our little booklet. And we headed back to the overworld to begin the first project for today. So the step up to HV also comes with the requirement for a lot of silver and a lot of gold. And of course a lot of stainless steel and regular steel, which we have been smelting here periodically through the blast furnace. But yeah, just taking a look at some of these HV components, we need gold cable, we need 2x silver cable, and we need 4x electrum wire. And electrum is just gold and silver through the alloy smeller. Silver really shouldn't be a problem, in fact I think we have a decent backlog here, oh yeah. We have a lot of silver here yet to be processed, I presume from the Twilight Forest. Gold, on the other hand, is a bit of a different story. However, we can craft ourselves up some chemical baths. We're going to make two of these actually at LV. And the chemical baths we're going to place right here, of course powered by gas turbines, since this will run from benzene. And there's two main recipes we want to run through the chemical bath. And both of these recipes require us to have mercury, which we can actually get from centrifuging redstone dust. Some of this mercury I have actually been sending into the fluid solidifier for Quicksilver. And I actually just recently learned that you can't turn Quicksilver blocks, which is what you get when you send mercury through a compressor. You can't turn these blocks back into the fluid form. So I was just compressing them down to make it easier to store. But it's okay, we can use these for Thumbcraft later on. These will be useful for infusion stabilization. But yeah, at least to get us started, we do have three tanks, almost four tanks of mercury. And the mercury has to go through the chemical bath along with two other items. So we can place the tank and then I think I have two spare pumps here. Oh yeah, I left them in this chest. This chest is uh, a bit disorganized, but we might have a solution for that today. <laughs> and in fact, you might have actually already noticed some changes around here. I rearranged some of these drawers. We have some more of the dusts and bulk items in drawers. Some of the ingots now have their own barrels. And some of the bulk storage I actually implemented down here. Nothing super fancy, just a space for some extra barrels for all of the cobblestone. Yeah, cobblestone, nether rack, dirt, hardened clay, anything else that can make its way down here really. Anyways, yeah, the mercury tank is going to go in between the two chemical baths and then we'll place a pump to pull the fluid in. Set to import. So yeah, the two primary recipes we want to run here is for platinum metallic powder dust. Platinum we don't need in huge quantities until we hit EV, but I know from experience that it's best to build this up as early as we can. So all future nickel will be processed through the chemical bath. I guess we need to do inputs, which we can actually do with a conduit. And we can also take care of the outputs with a conduit as well. The primary recipe we want to run here is actually magnetite, which we can get a 70% chance of gold dust. And that should really, really boost the yield on the magnetite veins for gold. You can see there's some space for some other machines here as well. I thought while we were implementing this, we would also just make some space for other processes. One of those is going to be the sifter, which we're actually going to move from here. The sifter is going to go on this back wall, and this will eventually be replaced with the multi-block, which we can actually craft now that we're in HV. So it might be something that we invest in here in the future, and it should fit in this space. For now though, we'll just move the chests. Oh wow, that is a, a lot of ruby. 
Yeah, we'll have an input and an output chest. Range to automatic output. And conveyor to automatic input. One of the other processes that we want to implement over there is going to be thermal centrifuging. This is actually something we need to implement today because we need tantalite for tantalum, which we can get from pyrolusite. And pyrolusite is in the tantalite vein, which we have our miner in the nether. So all of this is going to come together here. It's going to be glorious if everything works out. But this is actually a machine which takes two amps of power. Yeah, it takes two amps and each of these gas turbines produce one amp. So I think we're going to have to send two of these turbines into one cable. And then the cable will attach to a single machine, conveyor on the top for input, and we can just roll with the one thermal centrifuge. Oh yeah, and all of this potent pipe all goes up to a super tank in the ceiling, which is going to hold a tank of benzene. We'll just manually fill this for now, although we do have to look at a way of transportation for benzene, but that's something we'll look at later on. The final slot for the machines here is actually going to be the ore washers. We are going to move these over from this location here. Oh, I should not have broke that. <laughs> that chest was full. All right, so now we have dedicated processes for thermal centrifuging, chemical baths, washers, sifters, and of course the grinders and furnaces. And some of you guys might be asking why we didn't do fully automatic ore processing. And that's something we definitely will do later in the game. But even just from the little bit of explanation I did for gold or magnetite and nickel, you can probably imagine there's like a million different ways to process everything. And so that requires specific ore filtering for every single item in the game. And that's just not something we have the ability to do right now. It's best just to ensure that we can batch craft, so to say. So we have large input chests and large output chests. Oh, I guess we can't really open these, can we? Alright, this should be a perfectly fine solution for now. And the benefit to doing it this way also is that we can, in the future, upgrade these machines. And speaking of the benzene, actually, we are still yet to buffer this, as I mentioned. So I think we're going to have to grab some of it in the pipes. It looks like it's up to around here. The pipe capacity for benzene is actually no joke in this system. <laughs> we have some long pipes and they carry like a couple buckets each. Let's just take it out of some of these machines, actually. Oh yeah, and we have a couple of little mascots around the base. <laughs> I added these little uh, decorative sections. I thought they looked pretty cool. A little bit different to just another flat striped wall for blue and black. So the crushed tantalite, I'll have to go and collect the miner, but we do have a little bit here. We want to thermal centrifuge. The crushed ruby, we want to send through the ore washer for chrome. We almost have enough for another full batch of stainless steel, another nine stacks. We are actually short a little bit of manganese though. But I did go mining between episodes, which is why we have all of this spessartine. I picked up basically the full vein. And the spessartine, of course, is how we get the manganese, which should be easy to do with this new system. Okay, so now that we have the ability to get some of the materials for the farming station, let's start to work through Ender IO. Okay, I am like 90% sure this is going to work, but one of the materials we're going to need in large quantities today is going to be obsidian. I really, really hope this works. So we've made ourselves a rock breaker, and if we put some water on one side and lava on the other... Apparently I didn't collect lava. Let's uh, steal some from the smeltery. I think this automatically will produce us cobblestone, right? Yes, there we go. It's being powered actually by a steam turbine back here, which is connected to the main steam line. And we actually repurposed this from the ore washers. So yeah, water on one side, lava on the other gives us regular cobblestone. We have a hopper underneath into a buffer chest. However, if we give this some redstone, uh, let's cover up this water and lava. Yeah, if we give this some redstone, which can go inside the barrel and conveyor for input. I think instead of cobblestone with the redstone inside, it should give us obsidian. Maybe? Please? <laughs> oh no, it doesn't work. Oh no, this is not what I want to see. Aha, quest book to the rescue here. We need to toggle the ghost circuit to circuit one to get obsidian. Okay, that is significantly slower, but do we get obsidian? Yes, we do. Awesome. I think we can just leave this to do its thing for a couple of hours, and we should come back to a whole lot of obsidian here. Alright, so the next steps for us is to, well, first of all, collect some more diesel for the blast furnace. Ideally, we switch this over to benzene, but uh, that requires us to switch out from combustion generators over to... 
gas turbines. I can hear an enderman up there. For ender IO, we also need electrical steel, which I've been smelting here through the blast furnace. I think we're gonna have to start a new batch of pulsating iron for more ender conduits. Ender conduits? Item conduits. It's been it's been so long since I've used them. And this also has to make its way through the blast furnace. We should be able to pick up the quest if we hold all of these ores. I think it was Spessartine, Tantalite, and Pyrolusite. Uh, there must be one we're missing here. Grossular. That's right. Hopefully we have some of that. We do. Oh, there is no way we are five short for this quest. Hopefully we have some in here. So yeah, the Tantalite we want to set to process through this, the thermal centrifuge. It's going to give us Niobium, which is useful for EV, and Tantalum. And even if we don't roll the 10% chance at Tantalum, we also get Tantalite, which we can electrolyze nine at a time. However, the quest reward here gives us 64 bolts, which we are definitely going to take over the loot bag. And if I'm not wrong, there's also another quest reward here for the Overworld variant, which is actually the vein I went to mine out, the Spessardine vein. And this also gives us 64 tantalum bolts. And some celery soup, which I'm definitely not interested in. <laughs> celery is actually not a bad vegetable, all things considered. Anyways, the next step is the machine chassis which does require our basic capacitors. This is going to take some manganese foil and the tantalum bolts. However, we've also had some quest rewards. Actually, specifically some loot bags. So we have 32 capacitors already. I did pre-craft some of the materials here. We need some steel casing. We also need some electrical steel plating. And then we just combine in the assembling machine. Let's try and get eight if we can. Eight chassis seems like a good starting point. And yeah, almost all of this stuff in this quest line is useful. Besides maybe the sag mill. I don't think we're going to use the sag mill. All right, we got the eight machine chassis. And the quest. Yeah, we're basically going to be beeline in this farming station, at least to begin with here, which again is in the HV tab. And it's similarly over on the right hand side. Okay, so let's pin as we go. We need electrical steel gears. We need pulsating crystals. We need robot arms at HV. We need dense pulsating iron plates, which is currently in the blast furnace. And we need a Z logic controller, which I think needs the slice and splice. Yes. Oh boy. This is going to be a rabbit hole and a half. Oh, that is a weird texture for the magnet. You see that? I don't know what's going on there. Okay, first on the list is the slice and splice, which needs solarium. Solarium is just gold and soul sand through the mixer and then through the blast furnace. So I realized to unlock the quest for the slice and splice, we were going to have to unlock the HV machine hulls. So I decided to pivot and batch craft a lot of the components we talked about earlier. The silver cable, the gold cable, the electrum wire, the stainless steel rods, plates and gears, and that should give us a decent starting off point for HV. One of the other recipes actually I missed earlier on is we could actually put gold straight in the chemical bath. This has a 70% chance to give us an extra gold dust from every crushed. So we're going to be swimming in gold here. It's going to be glorious. And yes, there is actually a few other ways to get gold. We could do a glowstone processing. We could set up a glowstone farm. That is probably something we'll look into in the future. But sometime later, we do have most of the materials crafted. I think there's still some silver cable processing, but we should have all the materials we need here to break into HV. So let's make ourselves four HV machine casings. We can do more, but we'll keep the stainless. And of course, convert these into machine hulls. Maybe not. Oh, this is polyethylene. Polyethylene sheets. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. No problem. <laughs> that just caught me off guard a little bit there. I didn't expect to see polyethylene. Not to worry, though. We do have a fluid solidifier dedicated to this. And there we have it. The first four HV machine hulls. The quest, tier 3 HV. We can also pick up the slice and splice. Oh, we need the solarium quest. I bet that's an MV. There we go. There's the solarium quest. This should be two quests. And we got our second HV bag. Sort of the cosmos. A crop harvester. Huh. I didn't think these things were actually that useful anymore because we have the new crop manager. Anyways, moving on. Let's make up the first batch of electric motors at HV. We have enough for 16. And it looks like up next, we need to get the You're Gonna Hate This quest before the farming station quest unlocks. And for that, we'll need the HV conveyor. I think we need two of these for the robot arm. We need the HV pump, which is so much more expensive than the MV version. Stainless steel fluid pipe here and steel rotors. Oh my goodness, everything is just a mess here. Look at this. Oh, Greg Tick. Okay, we need the electric piston. And finally, the robot arm, which does need our HV circuits. And I thought I'd lost it there, but no, it's in this other chest. We do have some of these crafted. And that allows us to make the first two HV robot arms. Super, super expensive right here. You're gonna hate this. Okay, so now we should be able to craft the farming station. We do need to get these pulsating crystals, which I think is just in the assembling machine. And then the Z logic controller. We need a way to power the slice and splice.
All right, so the farming station should be a relatively simple thing to set up. I may or may not have overlooked one or two aspects to this though, but we'll get onto those in a second. We're here to collect some more oil. We ran the blast furnace a bit too long and ran out of diesel. But yeah, once we have the benzene fully automatic, we don't have to worry about things like this and I would consider ourselves in a more stable state within the game. And pretty soon here we're going to be checking out some magic mods and some of the other side quests, so to say. Not necessarily just chasing down the tiers of the game. Okay, so what we are going to do is put the farming station directly above this setup. You may actually notice a little platform up there already. I have alluded to some plans to build a whole farming district, which I'm thinking is going to go over in the fungi forest. And the reason for that is because I see two crops receive benefits in specific biomes. It's not something we'll get into today, but yeah, what we're going to do is move the input drawer from over there to here, just to line it up a bit better with the center of the farm. So technically, we're not going to fill that drawer. We're going to fill this drawer here. And we'll also need one for saplings, I guess. Is there anything else we're going to get from spruce wood? I think we might only get the leaves if we have shears, which we're not going to add. But yeah, this is going to be connected via an electrum item pipe. And I didn't make enough. Of course I didn't. On the surface here, we have a 15 by 15 platform. I don't think we can get the full range right now because the range on this thing det is determined by the capacitor that you put inside. And of course, one of the things I overlooked here was this capacitor. You see, to craft this capacitor, we need energetic alloy. So how do we get energetic alloy? It starts with black bronze, which is electrum, gold and silver, plus copper. And then black bronze, we combine with nickel dust and steel dust, and this gives us black steel dust. Black steel is then combined with silver and conductive iron. And conductive iron is redstone alloy, iron and silver. Redstone alloy is redstone, raw silicon and coal dust. Then finally, we get the energetic alloy. It takes like 120 seconds each. And then we have to fluid extract it. And yeah, look at the long chemical name on this thing, it's crazy. Then we can craft in the assembly machine with the capacitor and some coal dust. Might as well make up two of these things actually, let's put another six through this fluid extractor. It's always a good idea to make more than you need. And that applies for pretty much everything in this game. Oh yeah, there is the double layer capacitor. This double layer capacitor takes it up to a five block radius, I'm pretty sure. I'm also not certain how much RF this thing takes. Okay, 67. RF, I'm pretty sure, converts to EU in a 4 to 1 ratio, so it's going to cost somewhere in the region of 15 or 16 EU per tick. That's totally manageable, actually. Yeah, that's one of the questions I actually had about this. We are going to need a way to power this farming station, and to do that, we're going to use the benzene itself. I just wasn't sure if we could get away with an LV or MV gas turbine. It seems we're going to be able to get away with 32 EU per tick. It's going to be more than enough to an LV. Now the question is, do we want to send the fuel up to the generator or do we want to send the power up to the farming station? The correct answer is going to be fuel to the gas turbine, which is going to be right here. Yeah, we, we need to shut out all of these things. It's going to be much cheaper this way. Potent is cheaper than redstone alloy cable. So I suppose it makes sense to send the fuel line parallel to the item pipe. And we could technically do conduits, but that's way too expensive. So we're going <laughs> to we're going to go with this method instead. We just need to make sure we use the shutter system on the pipes. Our wrench might not survive this ordeal though. Oh, there it goes. It's destroyed. Oh yeah, and this doesn't apply to item pipes from Gregtech. These things don't have any shutters. These work on a priority system. And I believe just send it to the first uh, inventory that's available on the line, which is perfectly fine. Taking a look at these pipes again, this line is actually already a fuel line. It goes over to power those gas turbines, which powers the molly block. So we should just be able to connect over to this line, and that's going to give the gas turbine all the benzene it needs. As for the item pipe though, we also want the conveyor on the drawer. And we want this set to enable input and import. So what that's going to do, I think, is put all the spruce logs in the drawer first, but then it's also going to import into the pipe and then put all the logs in the pyrolyze oven. We need some way to convert EU to RF, and here we just used an MV battery buffer into a capacitor bank, which we also got from a quest reward. I don't know if the capacitor bank is necessary. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can test this. Does the battery buffer output to a conduit? I somehow don't think it's going to connect here. Hmm. Okay, maybe in that case we need the capacitor bank. Okay, I grabbed the rest of the pipes to connect this together. So this is going to send the benzene up top to the gas turbine. Then I suppose we're going to have to move this down a block. We want the capacitor bank in place of that, and then the gas turbine. Then we can do the energy conduit, which should share a space with the item conduit. And that allows us to get energy and items in and out of the farming station. Perfect. It's been a while since I've played with the farming station, but I'm pretty sure it keeps the saplings in the input slot. 
meaning any any saplings that it actually farms and collects. So I think all we need to do is actually just set the extract, which is going to be on blue. That will then insert into this chest here. And we need a conveyor module to connect this together. Oh my goodness, there's so much running back and forward here. Okay, conveyor module to pull from the chest into the pipe. And I forgot to grab saplings. Of course I did. However, we should be good to go with this. We should be golden once the sun sets. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful sunset. Okay, I think all we have to do is give the saplings, lock the slot. So one of the other things I overlooked with this is it does need an axe to actually harvest the trees. We're going to give this our own lumber axe, the vanadium steel version. And I'm looking to make this unbreakable. I think we need 10 modifiers and we are currently at 7. So I may actually go and level that up manually. I'm not sure if it actually levels up inside the machine. That's something we have to test here. Let's make sure everything else works. Does it cut down the tree? Oh, there's two that grew. Yes, it does. Instantly. Look at that. It has a bunch of logs here. We might have to build some extract speeds for the conduits. Oh my goodness, this thing is so fast. So all of the items should be going to this buffer chest. And then the conveyor is going to pull it inside the pipe. We might need more than an LV conveyor. These electron pipes can handle one stack per second. But the conveyor can only pull one stack every 20 seconds. So that is going to be a bit of a bottleneck here, I think. However, below we should be seeing some logs in this drawer. Let's make sure we lock the drawer. And it was also pointed out that this thing will actually drop items on the floor. I'm not seeing that right now, but I believe that is the case. Oh yeah, it does drop items. Uh, yeah, we're, we're collecting a lot of spruce. That's something we need to address. And the other very important thing is a void upgrade for these things. We don't want the farming station to stop when we're full on saplings. And in both cases, this is where the obsidian comes in. I am so glad I set this up hours ago. Oh yeah, and this is one tip that you guys need to know about here in GTNH. It feels kind of cheaty, but I actually just remembered about this. So, obsidian, you can actually put in the alloy smelter with an ingot mold. Oh, this is such a good recipe. So when you do this, it actually gives you nine ingots at a time from one block, which is just crazy, right? If you Normally, if you pulverize, you only get one dust, and then one dust converts into one ingot. So getting nine from the full block here from the alloy smelter is so good. And then for the void upgrades, we need some dense obsidian. Dense obsidian is made via obsidian plates. I've already been making up some of this because this takes 180 seconds at MV. So <laughs> it takes a very long time to process this stuff because you have to go from ingots to plates first. And that itself already takes uh, like 20 seconds each. And then, 100, and then another 180 on top of that to make them dense plates. And then I think the best item for item collection is going to be the advanced item collector, which is more obsidian, which is why I said we need a lot of this stuff, and ender pearl plates. We should be able to make up that. And then we have ender infused obsidian, which is four more dense plates each. And we need four of these item collectors. So I'll see you guys in, I don't know how many seconds. A million. <laughs>
Oh yeah, actually, we're, we are missing void upgrades for these drawers. That's something I'll have to add as well. I think we can also call this mission success, right? We also were able to fill the drawer automatically and we got the void upgrade on there as well. So there should always be somewhere for the logs to go. We shouldn't have any spillage up there. However, there is one more project I would like to tackle today. Storage. It's something I've been tinkering with between episodes and I did make some improvements here with the barrels. However, Ender.io actually does have a solution for us at this point in the game, before we get applied energistics. And our solution comes in the form of the inventory panel over here which is certainly not cheap for this point in the game. So maybe we can claim some of these quest rewards in HV. Oh no way, we get three enchanted HV bags. For the farming station quest? Okay, we're definitely gonna take those. Okay, three enchanted, four normals. Let's see what we get. Okay, a bunch of empty canisters. This is gonna be useful for when we go to space. We got an HV battery, which isn't too bad. We'll need one of those. Okay, now for the enchanted. What did we even get there? Some oxygen pipe? <laughs> Man, the game really wants us to go to space, right? Some more transistors, bookshelves, reinforced glass, and blue steel. Not the best, but we'll take it, we'll take it. Alright, so the inventory panel is going to basically unify our storage, and pretty much should make things so much easier when we go to craft. At least until we get our applied energistic system, which by the way, unsurprisingly, is very, very expensive. First of all, we need titanium. And if I remember right, the molecular assembler actually takes an EV assembling machine pair. Like that is just complete madness. I did continue the preparations for this while waiting on the obsidian. And one of the new materials we need for this is dark steel. Oh, wait a second. I'm not sure if we can get the quest for this today. We should be able to craft it, but I'm not sure if we can get all of this. We need vibrant alloy to get vibrant crystals to get the creation of life, which is the powered spawner. Okay, this is going to be quite the rabbit hole, but even if we unlock the quest, I don't think we can get all eight of these remote awareness upgrades because these take two HV circuits each. <laughs> so I don't think that's going to happen. You'll notice here that we do need an Eye of Ender, and that's going to neatly bring us on to our first HV machine. We do still have some of those components here, right? Oh nice, and I did craft an extra Z logic and pulsating crystals, that's something we'll need for the inventory panel. But yeah, to make the Eye of Ender, we need an HV chemical reactor. I'm pretty sure we can craft it, we do have some spare circuits, an electric motor that's in this chest. We're down to our last six circuits, which should be enough. And looks like we can actually craft this, so technically our first HV machine, the chemical reactor. There is an argument to be made that we should have probably rushed the assembling machine. That's never really a bad idea once you hit a new tier. But I have been working on a few more circuits, I think this is something I'll do between episodes. Let's stay focused on the inventory panel, so we are going to need a way to actually power this chemical reactor, right? Since this is HV, it's not going to run off the MV line. At least not without a transformer. Okay, I always get very, very ner- let's do a backup. Backups is never a bad idea when you're messing with transformers because if you transform the wrong way, then you're gonna end up with an explosion, right? Okay, easy does it. This is the input side. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna disconnect this cable. And I'll even break it just in case there's any internal buffer inside here. I don't think these store any electricity though. Okay, so it's currently in transform down mode, which means it goes from HV to MV. We want it to go from MV to HV. To switch the mode, you hit it with a soft mallet. And then there's two different faces on this. I think small dot is the input, and then big dot is the output. So we should be able to connect our HV machine on the big dot. Here. MV to HV. <laughs> if you guys get that reference. But no, no explosions this time. Oh, wait a second. Blaze powder. We don't have blaze powder. Okay, I remember seeing a fortress off to the east here somewhere. And we have all the extra hearts from eating all those foods, which should help us out today. Especially from all the infern- Oh yeah, I see the fortress over there. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous. There is a chest here, actually. Nothing. Oh, we got ourselves a blaze spawner. This looks relatively closed off, which is good. Oh, somehow a wither skeleton showed up here. <laughs> and it looked like he spawned right next to the blaze spawner. It kind of looked like he was spawned by the spawner. Oh, he's invisible. <laughs> we got him. Okay, this should be relatively easy. Let, let me gather what we need here. After collecting enough loot from the nether, I headed back to the base and ran the HV chemical reactor and started to put together the rest of the materials we need for the inventory panel. I have been preparing for this inventory panel even before the episode started. This took an absolutely insane amount of time to get. But we finally have two remote awareness upgrades. We're not going to get the quest as I mentioned. This is our last four HV circuits, the Eye of Ender of course, Conduit Binder, 
silicon solar grade plating, and electrical steel. So yeah, we also need a display, and with the display we should be able to make our inventory panel. This is where the dark steel comes into play, the extra pulsating crystals, Z-Logic controller, and one of the remote awareness upgrades. No quest though. However, we're not done there. We do actually need to power this thing. I'm thinking it's going to go right here, actually. We do actually need to power this thing, and it runs off something called nutrient distillation. So to make nutrient distillation, we have to go to this quest over here and pick up the vat. Alright, I think I've finally figured this out. We made ourselves the vat, and this needs three different items. Well, three different inputs, more accurately. We need water, we need mushrooms, and we need some sort of mob head. We are just going to fill this manually, which is why we have the machine exposed, since this is really only meant to serve until we get applied energistics. We also need to power this thing, and we could use the capacitor method that we did previously, but the capacitor banks actually take cadmium batteries, and that's just not something we have right now. There is another way though, if we use GregTech generators, this is an old combustion generator, I think from the old EBFs, and so long as you have a cable in between, which should transfer the energy from EU into RF, as long as you have the cable in between, it should give power to the machine. The IO on the vat is then going to push into this fluid tank, and then from the fluid tank we're going to use fluid conduits to allow us to share the block space. This is going to be set on extract, and these fluid conduits by the way are the best we can get. Any higher than this and it needs an HV assembly machine. These fluid conduits actually rely on gravity and also the viscosity of the fluid. So I was going to put all of this in the floor, but then I realized we couldn't send the nutrient distillation up to the panel, which is exactly where it's plugged into over there. Yeah, this is receiving nutrient distillation now. Let's connect it up to this crafting chest that we've been using in the floor. All we have to do is give it the remote awareness upgrade, and yes, we do need one of these for every inventory we want to connect to this panel. So it's very, very expensive. We can only really afford one today. But we should see all of the items in the chest. Perfect. We have a little crafting grid on the left. This return area, I think, just puts things away. Yeah. The other issue we have with this is the water situation, but fortunately, now that we're in HV, we can actually craft up this reservoir. This thing will automatically output if you hit it with the wrench. I think the little arrow there signifies automatic output. So we have this next to the vat that should keep it full of water. <laughs> and these reservoirs, we need to craft a few more, but they are not cheap. They take, I think, four HV pumps each. So yeah, maybe not the best use of the first one. But I mean, we'll need more anyway, right? And the final thing for today is going to be SISG automation. I actually did this earlier in the video, but I cut it out. I just wanted to show you guys the, the very simple setup that we have. It's two chemical reactors and one MV electrolyzer. And yeah, for all of these awareness upgrades, which I'm going to try to get some more of between episodes, we do need silicon solar grade plating, which of course is cooked from silicon solar grade dust. And this was the one that I was, uh, this was the new one basically in this version of the pack. Remember with the silicon tetrachloride? <laughs> it's actually not as bad as I first thought. It's just three machines basically, and it's a closed loop as well. So all we have to do for this is give it raw silicon dust, which we can get from various electrolysis recipes. Yeah, soda light, I guess, is a good re a good recipe to use for this. There's quite a few other ways of getting this as well, but yeah, raw silicon goes here. We need muffler upgrades. Almost running out of these things. We need to almost craft more of these. So yeah, the raw silicon is extracted on brown and goes into the second chemical reactor where it's mixed with chlorine. The resultant chemical then gets automatically output to the bottom chemical reactor where it gets reacted with zinc. And this will output the silicon solar grade dust. When we do this, we also get six zinc chloride dust, which is sent out on purple, and that goes into the electrolyzer, and that electrolyzes to give us all of the chlorine back, which gets put back in this chemical reactor, and allows us to repeat the cycle. So yeah, it's actually very simple. To power this, we've given every machine its own turbine, powered from benzene, of course. We can manually put benzene in this low voltage fluid tank, and then there's a pump on the back which distributes it among all the generators. Crafting all these machines today did mean that we were completely out of circuits, more or less. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I have been working a little bit on trying to get more. But next episode, I don't actually anticipate us using many circuits, since I think it's time for some Thomcraft. I would say this is an appropriate time to dive into Thomcraft. We have all the relevant technology. Stainless steel was really the main thing blocking us. How are we doing for benzene? Wow, 841,000. 
And I think this is a good wrapping up point for this episode. Another long one today. <laughs> this is becoming a bit of a theme. There's just so much to do in Greg Tech New Horizons here. But yeah, I'm having a blast with this. I appreciate it once again if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.